Hey guys, Sundown Rider here. This is going to be my chapter review to One Punch Man 85. Is it because I'm the Cape Baldy? Now, this, cha <laughs> this chapter was really good. I, I Well, it was it was quite good. It wasn't like a, really, really immensely sick. But there were there were things that went down. This is this is how I feel a wind down chapter should be in mangas. As opposed to how we got it, how we're getting it right now in My Hero Academia. So, sure, this was, it was a fast paced chapter. It was really like things were just flitting by. But we did get a whole bunch of story progression that um, this this chapter really made everything interesting, made every little bit of information we got really interesting. And first, what we had was the, we had we, we had the Hero Association discussing their plans. What are they going to do now uh, in order to retrieve that Waganma kid? I think it's the the, the kid of that Mr. Nakiri, or no, Nakiri, that's uh, Shokugeki no Soma, uh, Mr. Narinki, what they're going to do to retrieve his kid. So you can see how corrupt the hero association really is uh, they're caring they really they care about their positions all these um, supervisors and superintendents and whatever they are they care about their position and the power that they have when everyone else is un just under just as much threat as they are and everyone else is actually suffering because of it and they haven't really suffered many casualties they suffered like one when uh, the eyeball dude uh, Gyoro Gyoro went in and he, he did he did his thing uh, but they, they even refer to the heroes in this chapter as if they own them, as if they're just like assets that they can make use of whenever they can use or dispense them at any time. So whereas they are supposed to, sorry, whereas the, the heroes are supposed to be more like blast, not dispensable, not any, not, um, not, not to be used at any given time. They're meant to be under the radar servants of the public, you know, they're meant to be just heroic individuals who possess the power in order to make change. But these guys are, have really made them conform into this kind of society this 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 whole cr company this group where they dispense them and they use them as if they were just machines almost so we also have that mr narinki guy who ob he's obviously concerned about his child which is understandable but he can't seem to understand what was later said by metal knight which is that the hero association <coughs> excuse me the hero association will lose more heroes than are worthy of saving one child i.e the hero association will lose more and then humanity may in fact lose more than is worth saving one child for. So we actually then go on to meet a new Hero Association character. His name is Sekingal, who is in charge of the Waganma retrieval operation. The whole rescue operation, is in, he's in charge of this thing. And we see him briefing a whole bunch of high-level characters, and all, all named characters. We see him briefing Tatsumaki. We see him briefing Pig God, Super Alloy, Darkshine. Uh, Child Emperor is a part of his crew and all that. So essentially, Second Girl has created kind of like a strike force, a strike team of S-Class heroes and people who are just strong because we, we see a few more heroes after that uh, to retrieve Waganma. So the Child Emperor, like I said, is in on it too and he's searching for the Monster Association base. Uh, we then find out that our boy, now this, I was actually a little bit disappointed about this. I was like, ah, oh, really? Like, cause I really liked his his design and obviously you, you know who I'm talking about as soon as I say that. Our boy... Drive Knight went on a solo mission to take out the Monster Association or to just find out where they were. He was just going on a killing spree, I think. And he hasn't been in contact since going into Z City, I think it was. And so he's he's off the radar and they don't know exactly what's happened to him. And they assume Second Gal is like he's he's been compromised, he's he's been captured, he's been defeated. So I hope I really hope he's actually okay because he was one of the cooler looking heroes heroes to me and his ability was really interesting as all hell you know he had that um he had that little suitcase thing that kind of uh that thing he was carrying all the time and it would transform into little uh into his his, his i think he used a gatling gun at one point he used a sword and st stuff like that so it was really interesting seeing him do his thing but we never I'm, I'm hoping we get to see more of it and i'm hoping he's just uh riding around z city like on the run or something and i'm hoping saitama actually at the end of this chapter runs into him and he's like hey what you doing bro and then i'm hoping they kind of go on like a uh a co-op mission together and they just go kick ass that'd be that'd be really good and like saitama's riding on his back and shit that'd be hilarious i doubt that'll happen i do think he's actually still running around z city but i don't think uh saitama's gonna be riding on him or anything like that that'd just be a bit a bit too much uh, <laughs> a bit too much weirdness for me uh yeah so then we have zombie man uh who we saw i think we last saw him tracking armored gorilla in like two was it chapter 78 or something like it might have been chapter 78 and uh, he seems to have now found the wh wherever armored gorilla was going he's found that play that place so it could it could just be another house of evolution really um, but I'm not exactly sure because Armored Gorilla was kind of like, he kind of became docile, so I'm not too sure what, Z Zombie Man is obviously, he's following, um, 
he's following something he's following the lead he's following isn't gonna isn't gonna take him somewhere productive he's not gonna find the monster association there but he seems to have clocked onto something quite important to himself at least so he's he's doing his thing i'm not sure i think he might just be uh, following uh, like some sort of red herring uh, that is the term isn't it i think it might be the term yes yeah, so i think he's just following a lead which isn't going to produce anything atomic samurai actually makes an appearance we see him and his company uh, and they're all uh, they're all torn up and they're all ragged and they have they've been looking for the monster association headquarters they've been climbing mountain mountains and shit like that so it turns out that they didn't have the intel about z city being the kind of confirmed city for the whereabouts of um the monster association and my mask then turns up and he really antagonizes atomic samurai and i See, the thing with the My Mask is, is he actually strong enough to back up the words that he's throwing out at Atomic Samurai? Because we've seen Atomic Samurai, and he's pretty sick, you know, he, when he sliced and diced those monsters and stuff. It was awesome to see that, and Atomic Samurai is powerful as hell, he's an S-Class hero. But a My Mask is there like, ah, oh, you know, I could be an S-Class hero, I could, I, I'd be more powerful than you, Atomic Samurai. And Atomic Samurai is obviously getting pissed off, and I was like, bruh, like, you're not an S-Class hero, even if you could be. Don't be spouting that shit. So I'm not sure. Maybe he might be able to back up the words, but I get the feeling that a mind mask is nowhere near as strong as, as strong as he thinks he is, and he may actually be a little bit weaker than a lot of people are willing to recognize. So we then go to Puri Puri Prisoner. Now this whole, this scene was quite funny because um, obviously we get the serious nature of the of the this scene, which is puri puri prisoner is trying he's gonna set he's setting out to hunt the monster that cat the cat looking monster who killed the officers and stole the inmates and fed them the deep the monster hearts and that now they've become monsters he's he's going after that that monster and um so it's a noble thing to do he's gonna go after them he's gonna come he's gonna hopefully he's well he thinks he's gonna bring the inmates back but truthfully he's probably just gonna have to kill them now i thought it was pretty funny when that buff prisoner behind him come, comes running up behind him and he's like hey Puri Puri Prisoner, he's like, and he goes, hey boss, I, I made you a hand, <laughs> hand knitted sweat, and he's just looking at him like, oh, thank you, this will make me braver, <laughs> I was like, yo, this guy, so like, we know what Puri Puri Prisoner is like, and what he's probably done to these guys in prison, and they've all kind of become his, um, his prison bitches, so, you know, he's getting knitted sweaters and everything like that, so I was like, yo, Puri Puri Prisoner is living the life, <laughs> to be fair, so then we go back to Child Emperor, who converses with Metal Knight. Now, these two seem to have some sort of mutual respect for one another. You know, it looks like uh, maybe even Child Emperor sees Metal Knight as a hero who he aspires to be like. Uh, but either way, it doesn't really matter. But, well, their relationship is interesting, but the, the really nitty-gritty of this chapter is Metal Knight lays down the situation for Child Emperor. He's like, all right, let me tell you straight. If I say nothing in terms of, in regards to um, the location of the Monster Association, then a boy dies, a single boy dies. If I tell you, all the heroes, including the boy, will die. So it's all about weighing the options and considering which one's more logical, which one's more ethical, and which one's more beneficial. And it's all about what would be more, more beneficial. You know, we're not Metal Knight's not prepared to go send all these heroes to their to their deaths, or to all to save one, all to save <laughs> all to save one boy. Uh, and that boy is probably going to die either either way. To be fair. Now, we know that this most likely won't happen, but Metal Knight is obviously thinking of the greater good, and he's being logical about this. You know, he's he's being systemic, like kind of systematically cold, but he's being logical about it. He then ch tells Child Emperor uh, of his news about Orochi. Like, I don't know much about him. He used his weird moves. His antennas seem to grow and th things like that. But also, he tells him of this, da of this darkness that he's felt lurking in the shadows, and he's waiting... This, this shadow, this darkness, is waiting for the opportune moment to strike, and they need to be prepared for that. So I'm not sure who he, who he could possibly be talking about. Maybe it's someone who's more powerful than Orochi. Maybe Orochi isn't as powerful as he thinks, because we do know from that, uh, when we saw those uh, silhouettes back a few chapters ago, uh, during the conversation Orochi was having between his monsters uh, and the Monster Association at large, there were a few mo monsters there. We got was it what was his name? That sperm-looking character. Uh, he's he's definitely going to be a powerful character. So all these all these different characters are maybe uh, the darkness that Metal Knight is addressing. He's like Orochi isn't the one that we need to be the most afraid of, even though he is quite scary. <laughs> so we then go to Saitama and company, and who are visited by Fubuki. Now she seems to be trying to seduce Saitama to join her as one of the Blizzard group, seeing as her group has been decimated. Now this whole scene was hilarious. While Fubuki is like shook and shocked by the fact that there's all these all these um, notable heroes in Saitama's uh, apartment, you know, there's Silver Fang, there's his brothers, Genos is there, King is there. Uh, we have Saitama and King 
playing like the spin-off Pokemon game, which I they just I love that whole scene. I love the the why the hell is Earth weak to win? I was like, yo, this is sick. So Saitama learns that all these Pokemon are all essentially weak and they, they're all trash basically. And King beats them all with just one of his Pokemon. That was hilarious to see as well. You see the Game Boy they're playing on, and it, that was funny. I was I was really enjoying this part, and I, it also I also really enjoyed how. Uh, Fubuki doesn't really understand Saitama's calmness, we all do, but she doesn't, and especially uh, as all of his peers are injured and out of commission at this moment in time for at least 24 hours, and then we have Fubuki realizing that none of them can really help her in her war against the, the monsters, they're all injured and King seems to have a separate mission, now was this King just getting out of going um, with Fubuki on her uh, on her war against these monsters, or does he actually have another mission, I don't think he does, because if, if he has a mission, he's screwed unless Saitama goes with him. So then she wants to plan with Saitama, seeing as he's the only one that's okay, um, in order to go and, in order to go and find the, where the monsters are, or to do something to help the Hero Association. But she also wants to do it so that she can get a higher rank due to alongside Saitama, obviously due to their conduct in in this war. But she she wants Saitama, she needs Saitama to focus with her, and he's just kind of in his own little world. He's just doing his own thing, and. What I liked about Fubuki was she does display intelligence. We've seen we've seen this from her before, but it, she's noticing that this group of monsters must be held in check by a more powerful monster, and it's not like a, a whole. Uh, it's, it's not like that monster's ruling because he's loved by all the other monsters. It's more likely that that monster's like, "I'm gonna kill y'all if you don't follow me." So let's go into it and do this. So I like that she's more cognitive than what we see of Tatsumaki. Who, Tatsumaki's just like this hot-headed little chick who's just going in, busting everyone. So yeah, I, I really liked Fubuki for doing that. So I then really loved seeing how Saitama got pissed off because he realizes that Garo never hunts him down. He's like, why doesn't this guy hunt me down? Is it because I'm the Cape Boldy? I'm just the Cape Boldy. So, like, Yo. so even though they have actually encountered each other before, I think it's twice now. Now it's refreshing to see Saitama for me personally uh, going to go going to go out and like fight people, going to get some, uh, rather than randomly encountering people and then just taking them out. And uh, he always, like I said, he he always does chance upon someone really important just because of like oh shit, it's just he just happens to walk into them due to, due to luck, and. Um, he does, like I said, for walking people who are just really interesting or really important. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what he does and what he finds. And like I said before, maybe he'll find Drive Knight on the run. And that would be an awesome pairing. You know, Drive Knight, who we know virtually nothing about. And Saitama, who's just going to be like, hey, you're an S-class hero, huh? What rank are you and all that stuff? So it'd be funny to see that. We then have uh, Mr. Narinki. Uh, the, the chapter finishes off with Mr. Narinki summoning his own squad of like uh, fighters to retrieve his son. Now, essentially, they are just the sacrifices. They're, they're going to go. They're going to be the first casualties of this second phase of the war. They're not going to last very long at all. They've got these suits, which are very reminiscent of those those heroes we saw right before we saw Sonic. I think for the first time, and um, the suits that aren't as bulky or anywhere near. Uh, they don't look very much like that, but they look. But the idea of them is the same in terms of those suits weren't very effective against Saitama, and these suits probably won't be very effective against the Monster Association. So they're probably going to go out and just die, really. So it's it's a little bit of sad times for them ahead. But yeah, like I said, this chapter was really good. And this is how you do a wind down chapter. You don't. It didn't feel like filler, like the whole My Hero Academia uh, provisional license exam part two thing we're getting right now. It's It feels like a proper wind down before we go into full speed ahead again, you know? So I like this chapter um, in terms of ratings, probably about a 3.5, 4, yeah, 4, 4, out, of 5, 4 out of 5. And uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. So let me know what you guys thought. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in a bit.